Well, we've been telling you about a new plan by the two trust fund boys, Justin Trudeau and Bill Morneau, the first Trudeau who inherited his wealth from his father, who inherited from his father. Trudeau is the third generation away from work. And Bill Morneau, who simply married a billionaire heiress of the McCain family. So those two trust fund boys are changing the tax laws, targeting small businesses. For example, a, a family business where maybe the dad does some work and the mom does accounting. And so in the business, $500 is paid for there. They're cracking down on these small businesses, calling them tax cheats. Farmers, small business people, tax cheats, they're going to wring tens of billions of dollars out of middle class people. But look at how they live large themselves. Joining us now via Skype to talk about one grotesque example is our friend Sheila Gunn-Reed, our Alberta Bureau Chief. Great to see you again, Sheila. Hey, Ezra. How are you? I'm fine. I've been following your reports on this subject. This attack on working families, on small companies that Bill Morneau and Justin Trudeau are launching, it's going to hit farmers really hard. It's going to hit the kind of person who incorporates and is a small business. It would hurt people like us. We're actually a little bit bi bigger than the businesses they're, they're smashing. Before we get to the super gross example you dug up, tell me how these proposed tax changes would flatten you know, the local restaurateur, the local gas station owner, the local farmer in your community. Well, I think it's these tax changes are going to hit Alberta particularly hard. The Liberals are proposing to change um, how corporations can delegate income amongst the corporations. So you brought up a really great example about the wife that does the bookkeeping for the husband who is a private contractor. In Alberta, almost the entire oil patch works um, through contractors. So the welder on the drilling rig, he's a contractor, and maybe he pays his wife to do bookkeeping. The Liberals are going to crack down on that. They get to, to decide what sort of work equals value within your corporation. And with family farms, they're changing how farmers can name shareholders in the company. And that's how a lot of farmers plan for succession, for who's going to take over the farm next. And that's really going to hit about one quarter of Canada's farms, anywhere up to a 93% tax rate. Yeah, outrageous. So that's what they're doing to the little people. Uh, I mean, I've pointed out before that if you're a connected insider liberal, for example, if you're a two-time failed liberal candidate, well, you'll be appointed <laughs> a diplomat, even though you have no diplomatic experience, and you'll make about a quarter million bucks instead of the 100000 that that position normally takes. They did that for one of their insiders. I, I mean, Gerald Butts himself took $127,000 just to move down Highway 401 <laughs> from Toronto to Ottawa. You could buy a house. You could put a down payment on a house for his moving expenses. But you found something, it's a little bit smaller than these six-figure giveaways, but it is so, so gross. And this is right in the private office of Bill Morneau himself. Take it away. We've got the, we've got the images of these handwritten notes. We'll show them while you describe them. Tell me what these notes are that we are about to put up on the screen in succession. We're going to put them up now, and you tell me what these are. Okay, so I thought that I would take a look at... The expenses that are happening in Bill Morneau's office, I mean, this guy thinks that my family needs to pay him more money. He needs more of my farm's income. I thought, well, let's take a look at how he's managing the money that he's already getting from me. So I started going through some of the ministry's expenses. And the person who is supposed to be the most organized person in the ministry, the person who's hired for her organizational skills, a woman named Sharon Carr, she's Bill Morneau's executive assistant, she's losing receipts all over the place and just giving handwritten notes and being reimbursed for these receipts. And she's also, we also found that while at the G7 finance minister's meeting this past spring in Venice, she was taking water taxis all over the place to the tune of $400. Yeah. Here, let's look at this one. Hold it up on the screen. So this is a handwritten note. And you can see in the top right, it says, Document Released Under the Access to Information Act. Taxi receipts from Venice. During my trip, I personally spent more than $400 for water taxi fares during our trips. They wouldn't provide receipts, and prices were high. 
given it was during the Venice Biennial. So, hey, boss, um, can you give me $400? I swear I incurred it. Um, it. Show one more of these. I just want to show one more of these. During my trip to Washington, I personally spent $60 US for a taxi fare for which I have misplaced the receipts. You know, try that if you're a small business person, Sheila. Try saying to the CRA, oh, no, 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 no. I didn't keep the receipt. I lost it. And $400 for a water taxi? I've been to Venice when I was younger. Water taxis are what tourists take. You don't, you're not doing business in a water ta taxi, you know, <laughs> take me to my meeting. That is a tourist junket. And imagine handwriting, uh, boss, can you give me 400 bucks? And getting the money. But they call you a tax cheat if you incorporate your farm. It's, it, it, it was crazy. When I first, it, it all, her handwritten letters are exactly the same. Like she does this so frequently that she has a form letter <laughs> for her lost receipts. And yet if I tried to, or if anybody in the private sector tried to get away with submitting receipts that way, your boss would tell you to get out of the office. New York, Toronto, Toronto again. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess occasionally I've lost a, a taxi receipt. Um, I mean, I've had, I mean, I, here at The Rebel, I submit receipts too. I give receipts to the company. You, you just need them for accounting purposes. I have never heard. In, in fact, I think the CRA treats unreceipted expense reimbursements as income because they know it's a joke. It's a scam. Yet the executive assistant to the finance minister herself does, how many times did she do this? She, we've shown half a dozen right there for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And Ezra, I went through April and May. <laughs> oh my um, God. And, and it wasn't like a year. I, I'm going to keep looking, but I thought, as I was going through that, I thought, this is crazy. This is a story in and of itself that, you know, my local heavy duty diesel mechanic that works on my tractor can't pay his wife for running to town all the time to pick up parts. The government is going to crack down on him for that. And these people can't even keep their receipts. I mean, it is crazy. You know, um, what, what a responsible boss who was uh, worried about his own money or the company's money, someone who was acting with a fiduciary duty, that's a word you have a, resp a financial responsibility, who was acting as if the public funds were held in trust, the first time he would say, sorry, um, we can't reimburse you. And you know what? I think that would focus the mind of his assistant so she wouldn't forget again. It's like, what was it from Duddy Kravitz? Oh, sorry, Dad, the, the money fell out of my pockets from the holes. Okay, good. Now, from now on, before, when you put your pants on, check your pockets for holes. Your, your excuse works once, never again. Again and again and again and again and again. If this is the, this is how the fish rots from the head down. Justin Trudeau gets the two taxpayer nannies. Gerald Butts get a, gets 127 grand to move down the road. Their failed candidate gets a quarter million bucks to be a diplomat. And hundreds and hundreds of dollars for water taxis in Venice. That's the top, that's the cherry on the top of the cake. Last word to you, Sheila. Well, I often wonder why these people don't Skype or video conference when, I mean, that technology is readily available. We're doing it right now. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the reason is you don't get to get the tourist view of places like Venice when you're saving the taxpayer money from behind your computer screen. Yeah. Well, Sheila, get back to work. You've got to earn money <laughs> to pay taxes so Bill Morneau's privileged assistant can take $400 water taxi rides because she's looking out for the middle class, Sheila. How disgraceful, but nothing will embarrass this government. They're, they're immune to embarrassment. I mean... There is no shame. And, and by the way, your story on this came out yesterday. Have you seen any mainstream media pick up the story at all? I know the answer before even asking. Of course not. But yeah. remember how they treated Bev Oda's orange juice? Oh, yeah. Yeah, an $8 orange juice from a hotel minibar. And I acknowledge $8 is too, too much to spend. $8 got a cabinet minister bounced. $400 Venetian taxi with no receipt. No problem. You know why? Because every media wants, every journalist wants to get in with the CBC or maybe get a gig being a PR man. Imagine that. You get a PR man for Bill Moore. No, you get to go to Venice next time yourself. Outrageous. Sheila, thanks for shining a light on this. No other journalists in Canada are.
Thanks, Ezra. All right, that's Sheila Gunn Reed, our Alberta Bureau Chief, holding the government to account. Hey, you spent $1.5 billion last year on the CBC. Uh, I guess they're just too busy writing about Trudeau socks to talk about boring things like expense account shenanigans. I don't want to use the word fraud, uh, but if I was a tax auditor, I'd probably look at second time. Hey, if you like that, sign up for my show every day. Click on the screen to subscribe.